Welcome back to The Breakfast of Plus TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is on Nigeria's economy and the controversy concerning the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, Governor Gabriel Emefiele, and Aboki FX. And of course, looking back at all the policies of the Central Bank of Nigeria that may have also led us um, where we are today. We're speaking with uh, a writer of uh, Tech Cabal, Mr. Olumuyiwa Oluwogboyega. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Great to have you on the platform. So let, let, let's um, first of all start with your views on the last 72 hours or more, the last couple of days. The central bank governor, of course, um, calling for a fight with uh, Aboki FX uh, owner and, you know, some of all, <laughs> all that drama. Um, and of course, uh, the, the website also declaring that they are going to stop posting parallel market rates on their side. Um, quickly share your reaction to that, first of all, before we move forward. Um, I, I do think that it, it's been, like you said, a dramatic 72 hours. I, I think some of what has happened has been a little overboard. Uh, but if you look at it in the context of um, the fact that we have a central bank whose um, primary responsibility is to maintain a stable exchange rate, and they've increasingly had difficulty doing that since, um, since around March, then you understand where some of the, uh, I, I don't want to say desperation, or you understand where some of the drama has come from. I, I've said, um, I think, in the last couple of weeks, that I do think that some of the some of the CBS policies, while they may be idealistic, they're a little misguided. Um, I, I'd say misguided, pretty tough choice to choice, tough choice of words, but I'd say misguided because. On paper, they, they expect uh, the market to behave a certain way and they expect individuals to behave a certain way. But we all know that um, theories do not always just play out very neatly in reality. So, yeah, that's, that's my view of the last 72 hours. I think some of it has been some desperate action on the part of CBN, has been them trying to clutch at straws. But, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So the CBN governor has basically accused the owner of the platform, Mr. Adedotu, of illegal forex trading, that they buy, you know, dollars with Naira, they hold sway, and then they try to manipulate the market. Let's talk about the possibility of Abuki FX as a website being able to manipulate the economy, um, you know, regarding our foreign exchange, you know, nationwide. What's the possibility of that being able to happen? Uh, the possibility of um, a website like Abuki FX manipulating FX rates long term is very, very small. Think about it like this. This is a website that mostly just uh, does an aggregation of um, FX rates. For instance, if you pick up uh, The Guardian this morning, you see that the leading story is that there's there's a backlog for FX demand of up to $2 billion. Uh, $2 billion uh, yeah, $2 billion. And you see that The Guardian, interestingly, quotes a a market price rate of one dollar to five hundred and seventy naira. Now, Abuki FX is down. So, where did they get those rates? So, at the end of the day, everybody who lives in Lagos knows that if you walk to a co hotel, you'd find a couple of people who are willing to trade. Uh, beyond walking to a co hotel, if you go, if you go to um, if you go pretty much, if you walk down your house, if you go anywhere, you'd be able to find people who are quoting rates for you. So the thing is that the parallel market, unlike um, the CBN's, um, the NAFEX rate, unlike the I and E exchange window, the parallel market is not one person. It's a bunch of people, right? And the prices on the parallel market respond to the macroeconomic conditions in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have a situation where all these people can come together and collude, right? So Aboki FX offers a pretty simple service they simply they simply um they simply aggregate the prices so yeah so that's pretty much it so i do not think that aboki fx manipulates the prices i think in giving that narrative we, we just give them too much power and that's mm. that's not what it is all right um you know one other thing you know besides um aboki fx now the general uh discussion concerning nigeria's exchange rate and why we've continued to struggle you know people will always mention the laws of demand and supply foreign direct investment and some of all of that um but you know something else that i think is you know hasn't also, also been spoken about is the fear that people have in investing and you know bringing more influx of um dollar into the nigerian economy can you share with us you know what you think the cbn has gotten wrong um, in being able to drive more foreign um, investment into the country 
Um, are there certain policies that have scared investors? Are there, you know, certain positions that the CBN has taken and maybe the current administration has taken that has made that difficult? Absolutely. If you look at, um, so Bloomberg published an interesting news report a few weeks ago, citing that New Unilever, the a multinational, um, couldn't get dollars that it needed. MTN Nigeria, when it wanted to pay, um, when it wanted to pay dividends to MTN Group, couldn't get dollars available for over a year at the official rates. So what we have is a central bank governor who believes that controlling liquidity is the solution to the problem. Uh, but the flip side is that when you control when you control access in that way, you also cannot bring money in because the reality is that they cannot take it out once they bring the money in. So I do think that we should have a clearer, more meaningful FX regime. Right now, I, I dare say that the FX uh, uh, the market in Nigeria is broken. So, so we need we need a situation where we sort of just can sit down and redo that all over again. Okay. Um, we have now been joined by another analyst, his Mr. Nick Aguli. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. And thank you very much. Good morning. Okay. So it seems a bone of contention, you know, in Nigeria's economy in the, in the past few hours really has been our foreign exchange rates. And the CBN is accusing Aboki FX of manipulating the market um, to the way it is now, trading at over 500 um, naira to a dollar. Um, from your own standpoint, what would you say are a combination of factors that actually determine the rates? Well, thank you very much for that question. You see, we have a unique situation in Nigeria where something that is very straightforward, we complicate it, we make life very difficult. It's as if, as a country, until we make things hard, we don't like it. I live in the UK. Nobody talks about foreign exchange in the UK because we spend pounds. But if you want dollars, you get the dollars. If you want any currency, you get the, the currency. It, it's not a big deal. It's not something that occupies national discourse. In Nigeria, it has become a big thing. You know, well, this is what we're discussing now. And the simple fact is this. The dollar is the commodity just like yams you buy in the market. And the price of the dollar is determined by the factors or by the forces of demand and supply. So long as the Naira is chasing after the dollar, the price of the dollar in relation to the Naira will continue to be high. There is nothing the CBN governor can do about it. If he likes, he can empty the entire foreign reserves of Nigeria into the FX market and the dollar will still continue to be high. Why? Because the Naira is chasing after the dollar. And these are a few instances I will give you. A few weeks ago, we discussed the issue of Nigeria setting fire on the gas we produce and then going to import gas. So when you go to the gas market to buy a, a cylinder of gas, you pay Naira to the dealer. But the dealer needs dollars to now go to the U.S. and import the gas. The same thing with petrol. We say crude oil, but we say petrol at the station in Naira. And then we now need dollars to go and import petrol. We need dollars to go and import food, import pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceuticals, import the vehicles that we drive. So long as we are needing dollars to go and buy these things, there is nothing that will make the Naira to be strong against the dollar. There's nothing. Not even NJS, when they come from heaven, that can make the Naira to be strong against the dollar. So fundamentally, instead of the CBN governor fighting to strengthen the Naira using our foreign exchange, uh, foreign reserves, the thing that Nigeria needs is to go back to the fundamentals. We don't have electricity. And because of that, our factories have closed. So when you see a Nigerian, the clothes he's wearing, the shoes, the food he's eating, the car he's driving, the medicine he's taking, the petrol in his car, the gas in his uh, kitchen are all imported. And to, for you to import these things, you need to go and buy the dollar. 
So, so long as you are chasing the dollar to buy it, it will never, it will never be weak against the Naira. So these are the things that we need to do. Uh, uh, Go back to the fundamentals. Let us become that productive economy that we were in the 60s and the 70s. And you see Nigeria's currency begin to strengthen. Well, By the Mr. way, Agule. if we were, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, so, so some of the points that you've ma made now, you know, clearly show that it's not just the CBN governor's responsibility now. Um, it goes way beyond him. There's a lot of, you know, other uh, policies of the current administration that may help the CBN governor to achieve his aim. So he may not necessarily be trying to get it to one naira to, a, to one dollar, but at least stabilize it. And I think that's what he has been struggling with. Make it, you know, a particular uh, figure and keep it there. Um, I'm going to go back to Mr. Um, Olo Boyega. There, there is, you know, some um, narratives that have also come out over the last uh, couple of days. Um, and I'm going to ask you to respond to them. The Nigerian factor in some of all of this, people have pointed out, that Nigerians, you know, also have not helped the situation by being a little fraudulent, you know, applying for the PTA and BTA, you know, and then using those funds for something else. They've also pointed out the um, other fraudulent requests um, for foreign exchange that have been used to do totally different things. Are these requests and are these points big enough uh, to be challenges with Nigeria's exchange rates? Or are they really just very, very, you know, little? Uh, and not enough to have the effect that the Naira is currently having? Um, thank you for that question. I'm going to make a quick clarification before I answer that question, because when you introduced me, you said I was with the publication Tech Cabal. I'm not with the publication Tech Cabal. Uh, right the newsletter publication is called Not a Deep Dive. Um, so to okay. your question, I would say that it's, it's a little, um, it, it's, it's a little um, tricky to have a policy that allows for arbitrage, that allows people to take advantage and then call on the goodwill of individuals. It's not possible. Uh, it is doubly naive because the CBN has been here before. We did this exactly in 2016. When you have an official market rate and you have a BDC rate and the difference in the spread between both markets is 83 Naira, anybody who wants to make money knows that the sensible thing to do is to go and somehow get the bank rates and sell it at the BDCs. It might not be, it's not legal, but what you have done is to incentivize people. We've had different economic conversations in Nigeria several times, and it feels like the big lesson we should always learn in Nigeria is that bans do not work. You have to quite understand how to incentivize people to do the right thing, one, disincentivize people from doing the wrong thing, number two. Unless those two things happen, you will not put policy down on paper and tell people to ignore the opportunity to make easy money because of patriotism when they know that other people are doing it and getting away with it. So when you understand it like that, we need to go away from this narrative of, uh, I, I have a problem with the idea of a strong Naira, a strong currency or whatever. What we should have is a currency that is determined by the free market. We should not continue this narrative about exports and now how we're spending X and Y billion Naira on exports. Because every time I hear those narratives, it is almost always the beginning of a policy that will lead to more poverty. Case in point, the border closure. Case in point, the decision in 2014 to, to increase the custom duty on cars. So what we should do instead is have a Naira that we don't need to maintain an artificial price for the Naira. It doesn't do anything for anybody. If you say that, the, if you insist that the Naira is 412 Naira to the dollar, nobody can buy it, it defeats the purpose. So what we should have instead is that price discovery should be able to happen. People, buyers and sellers should be able to decide on their own, how much do we want to buy this currency? So I would say that the CBN on its own, for its own part, has led to this crisis, right? Because if you look at up to 20, um, March of 2021, if you check, if you track the CBN rates and you track the BBC rates and you even track the parallel market rates, they're pretty much almost going in the same direction. The difference is very, very small. At certain points from 2014 to around 2019, the difference is maybe 4 Naira 85 Kobo, right? So when you have that situation, and you decide, I still want to peg the Naira to an artificial price at which nobody can buy it. It's one of the two things. It's either you're deceiving yourself or you're deceiving the market. And if you're deceiving the market, the players in the market are, uh, are also looking to make money. And then you put yourself in a quandary. So, yeah, that's how I see it.
Okay, um, I want to bring in Mr. Agule, and, and then I also want you to answer the question. Uh, Mr. Agule, um, in July, um, July 27th this year, um, the Central Bank of Nigeria um, ordered that um, the sale of Forex to um, BDCs in Nigeria had been suspended, and also the processing of their licenses also had been suspended. And we know that just a few hours after that, um, we saw depreciation of the Naira, and you know it continued until where we are now. So the CBN, is in the person of God in MFL, had said that the reason why they had suspended the sale of Forex to BDCs was because they had used themselves as a conduit for illegal transactions, and that if if anyone wants to buy Forex, um, they they can go and um, and go to the banks who have now been mandated to do that. So, um, Mr. Agule, what role would you say that played? The suspension, you know, of BDCs. What role would you say that played in, you know, deciding what the market is saying now? Mr. Agule first and then Mr. Olobuega. Uh, before I answer your question directly, let me just say that, you know, Nigeria, we, we, we carry out our governance in very myopic and, will I even say, timid ways. There is no need for a CBN governor to be wedding into the foreign exchange market. Like I was telling you, in the UK, I can take my debit card, my pound debit card, put it into an ATM, and select which currency I want. Is it pound, dollar, or euro I want? If I select euro, the ATM will dispense euro into my palms. That is how simple foreign exchange is. You know, it, like my co panelist said, the exchange rate that will eventually be used to convert that euro that I got to debit my pounds account is as determined by the market through the, 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 the laws of demand and supply. In Nigeria, we have big time foreign exchange earners. I can tell you some of them. Number one, the oil companies. All the upstream oil companies in Nigeria, and I work for some of them here in Nigeria, they earn their revenue almost entirely in, in, in US dollars. That's what they say crude for. But they need Naira to pay staff salaries, to pay some of their local costs in Naira. So they can put their dollars in the market looking for Naira. You have the embassies. You know, you have the international organizations that are being funded from their headquarters in Nigeria with dollars. All these people have dollars. If only the government will allow an interplay of those with dollars looking for Naira and those with Naira looking for dollars to interact in the market. In the same way, I go to buy yams in the market. If I go today now to buy a cow in the market, the government is not there fixing the price. I am buying that cow based on the laws of demand and supply. And because there are more cows in Katina, I will pay less price for a cow than I will pay for a cow in Lagos. Because there are less cows in, in, in Lagos. The government is not bothered about that. But in Nigeria, the government now came and created an unusual situation of having two markets. There is the so-called official market and then the parallel market. This has now created the avenue for people to simply go to the uh, official market, take dollars at 411, and come into the uh, parallel market and offload it at 550. How can government create such an avenue for people to be, to be rent-seeking? Rent so these are the things we are talking about. For me, if you ask me, my personal opinion is that the central bank should stop wedding into the Naira. Let us have a single foreign exchange market. Okay. If the dollar now has to exchange at 1,000 Naira to a dollar, so be it. What is going to happen? At 1,000 Naira to a dollar, people will suddenly discover that a Corolla car that you are importing is more expensive than the innocent motors that are being produced in Nigeria. And then they will start buying innocent motors. And as they are buying innocent motors, innocent is very happy. He's expanding his factory, producing more cars. Other people are seeing innocent making money, and they start coming into the car assembly sector. That is how you grow an economy. 
We oh. cannot artificially be, be determining the value of a commodity, no matter what it is. And we are having this problem in petrol, we are having this problem in foreign exchange. Okay. And the Nigerian government has to take different steps. Oh, all right, Mr. Agule. Um, Mr. Ologwe, yes, I, I do like that Mr. Agule is looking at the bigger picture um, regarding how it's not just, you know, within the sphere of the foreign exchange, it's also, you know, within the wider economy. Um, so, Mr. Lobwega, talking about the BDCs, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Please. Yeah, so talking about the BDCs, what role would you say the suspension of the BDCs have to play in all of this? Um, again, we've been here before. We did this exact same policy in 2016. It led to the exact same results we're seeing. Um, so what we're just seeing is you're just transferring the problem from one end to the other, right? You see the BDCs, you see the banks. It's the same problem. Um, and if you look at what the actual problem is, is that the supply of Forex to the INE window has not even risen to pre-COVID levels, to 2019 levels. And so as long as that supply is not there, if you like, if you insist on the price and people cannot find it, they're going to go somewhere else where they can find it. And you have to remember as well that there are at least 42 banned items on the FX list. Those people also need to have access for X one way or the other. They're still going to go to the parallel market. So I think that, um, again, just um, uh, banning the sale to BDCs, again, it's just attacking the symptom of the problem. It's not attacking the problem in itself. We're simply not um, attracting enough uh, foreign exchange inflows. Um, we're discouraging FDIs with the rigorous ways it is to take money out of this economy. So uh, uh, the analogy that um, when we float it, it becomes a thousand, it makes gorillas expensive, and then people would buy innocence, it's almost laughable. Um, that's, that's not, and, and you say that that's how to build an economy. That's not how to build an economy. But I will not dwell on that. I'd simply say that price discovery needs to happen. I'm going to agree with Mr. Aguilé up to the point that price discovery needs to happen. Um, the CBN needs to let the prices be determined, but that's about it. Yes. Right. So, yeah, that, that's, where, that's, that's where I'd end it for me. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I'm also going to let you uh, go ahead and speak with regards other persons that don't seem to be, you know, a part of this conversation. And that one person is the Minister of Finance, um, Zainab Ahmed. Um, she hasn't been mentioned in all of these uh, discussions concerning Nigeria's economy and, you know, the strength of the Naira. As the fiscal and monetary policies... There's so many different angles, you know, that could, you know, come into play here. But go ahead and share your thoughts on uh, the role that she has played and where she may not have also stepped up her game in uh, this well, discussion. This is directly the, CB, the CBN governor's remit. It's his direct remit. He gets to determine he, he, he's, a, he's responsible for FX exchange stability. So this has this is all his business. It's, this is not on the Minister of Finance at all. So yeah, and in theory, the the CBN governor is supposed to be independent up to some some levels. So again, this is purely a conversation about the CBN governor. It has nothing to do with the Minister of Finance. Absolutely. All right, Olu Muiwa Olu Boyega. Thank you very much for your time and for your views on uh, this discussion this morning. Truly interesting. All right. And um, Nika Gule also. Much. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for thank sharing you. your, your views with us. Thank you, guys. Have a great Have a day. Nice day. Okay, so we'll go on a break here, and when we come back, we'll be taking a look at another warning strike uh, that Jehusu has issued to the federal government if it does not accede to their demands. <laughs>